electric charge just like all the matter have volume and mass as their fundamental property the intrinsic property of electron and proton is obviously electric charge the property of the particle of electron and proton is obviously what is that that is electric charge basically when we classify electric charges they are basically of two different kinds positive electric charge and negative electric charge the si unit that is standard international unit of electric charge is coulomb after the name of scientist coulomb electric charge of a proton is taken as e is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb whereas that of an electron is taken as with the same value same magnitude but with a minus sign so that is minus of 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb whatever the charges are developed when we rub plastic rods or glass on with the help of some other objects for example if we rub a glass rod with silk glass rod will lose electron and obviously would become positively charged here you can see then when glass rod is rubbed with the silk cloth it loses electrons and it again attains positive charge exactly the same way when a plastic rod or or, uh, uh, or else an ebonite rod is rubbed with fur then what happens it gains electrons from fur and becomes negatively charged rod remember the fur is going to get positively charged whereas the plastic rod or else the ebonite rod is going to get negatively charged here you can see that the negative charges of the ebonite rod are increased whereas that of the fur positive charges are being left when we bring this glass rod charged glass rod and the charged plastic rod or the ebonite rod then they attract each other free electrons an atom you know that consists of protons in the nucleus and electrons surrounding the nucleus and obviously in the neutrons but neutrons are no charged electrons we know that they move around the nucleus and when the proton are binded in the nucleus there is always an attractive force between the valence electron that is the electrons in the outermost orbit and the nucleus but that force of attraction is very negligible during the formation of especially metallic materials these electrons they separate from their parent atom and move in random manner probably jumping from one atom to the other atom such electrons are called as free electrons and these are the free electrons which are responsible for the conduction of electric current all the metals especially like copper silver aluminum they have large number of such free electrons and because of that reason they can conduct electricity into them very easily that means electric current can be conducted very easily in the materials like copper silver and aluminum hence they are called as obviously the electrical conductors whereas the materials like rubber glass plastic they do not have such free electrons and because of that reason we call them as the insulators because the conduction of electric current is not possible in the materials like rubber glass plastic and etc and hence they are called to be as insulators how do you think is the electric current form supposing we consider a cross section of an electrical wire that means a good conductor here the thickness has been magnified in a such a large way that you would see that it is a horizontal lying cylinder but let me tell you it is the enlarged form of an electrical wire it will conduct contain obviously the positively charged particles that is the protons would be present in them and if we consider a cross section a that means only a part of that particular wire through which the electrons are going to pass so it's a reference point there is no such cross section unless and until we imaginary take that particular on our own there are electrons which are present in that particular conductor and you know that these electrons are free free to move 
free to move in random manner. And that is how they keep on moving in the given conductor in all the directions. So what happens is the number of electrons which are passing through the cross section from one side to the other side, whereas from the other side to the other uh, former side, that remains exactly identical. So what is the net flow of electric charge or electric current? I don't think there is any flow of electric current in such condition. Then, how does that flow? Supposing we connect this electrical wire with the source of an electricity. That means, supposing like a battery. And when that electric current is being allowed to pass, then what happens? That all the electrons are being drifted in one direction. That will be from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. And that is how the electric current is formed. Energy has to be provided to those electrons and then and then only they can be drifted in one direction. And when they start drifting in one direction, we say that electric current has been formed. Now originally when these electrons were not discovered at that time, the scientists used to believe that the electric current is due to the motion of the positive charges. And because of that reason, the direction of motion of the positive charges, that direction was considered to be the direction of electric current. But after the invention, that is the discovery of the electrons by Sir J.J. J. Thomson, it was found that the electric current is not due to the flow of positive charges but it is due to the motion of the electrons. Now, at present, we know that the direction of electrons in the given conductor is completely different as compared to the direction of the positive charges that was considered conventionally by the scientists. So, even today, we take the direction of electric current according to the direction of motion of positive charges. And that is called as the conventional electric current. Thus, the direction of the conventional electric current is exactly opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. Let us look at this video which represents a dry cell. And you know that there are two terminals in the dry cell, positive and negative. There is an electric potential difference across these two points that is positive terminal and the negative terminal due to the concentration of the electrons present at the given terminals. That means at the negative terminal there are large number of electrons and when electric current is passed, that means when it is connected to a resistor, the electrons as you can see pass from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. That was found out by Sir J.J. J. Thompson after the discovery of the electrons. You know that initially scientists used to believe that it is not the flow of electrons but the flow of positive charges. And that was taken from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery as shown in this animation. This is conventional electric current. So the flow of electric current conventionally is taken from positive terminal to the negative terminal of the source of electricity. What is electric current then? The net quantity of the electric charge which is flowing through any cross section of a conductor that is defined as electric current. That means electric current means the rate of flow of electric charge. So electric current can be represented as the quantity of electric charge upon time taken for that particular transfer. If amount of electric charge is Q, time is T, and electric current is I, then I is equal to Q upon T, and you know that the electric charge uh, uh, unit is Coulomb, and whereas that of time is second. So, the unit of electric current must be Coulomb per second. So, SI unit of electric current is Coulomb per second. But after the name of the scientist Andre Ampere, we represent that the uh, unit of electric current is ampere. If one coulomb electric charge passing through the conductor, that is the given cross section of the conductor in one second, then 
the electric current passing through that particular conductor, through that cross section of the conductor, is considered to be 1 ampere. There are smaller units of electric current like milliampere and microampere, where 1 milliampere is equal to 10 raised to minus 3. That is 1 upon 1000 milliampere, whereas 1 microampere is equal to 10 raised to minus 6. That is 1 upon 10 lakh ampere. The number of electrons passing through the cross, uh, through the conductor. If we consider that Q is the amount of electric charge passing through any cross section of the conductor in time t. We know according to the formula for electric current that I is equal to Q upon t. If the number of electrons passing is taken as n in time t, then the quantity of charge that is passing through the cross section would be Q is equal to n multiplied by E, where E is nothing but the electric charge of an electron. That is, of the positive electric charge we take it as, that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. So, using equation number 1 and 2, we can write down that I is equal to Ne upon T, or else N is equal to I into T whole upon E. If an electric bulb burns 0.5 ampere for 1 hour, how much electric charge will pass through it and how many electrons will pass through it, that is what we are expected to find out. I is given to be 0.5 ampere and time t is equal to 1 hour, that is equal to 3600 second. And we know that the number of charge, that is E is given to be 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. We are expected to find out that what is the total electric charge and how many electrons are going to pass through that particular cross section. Now we know that I is equal to Q upon T means Q is equal to I into T that is 0 0.5 into 3600. So 1800 coulomb charges would pass through the cross section for in the given condition. Also we know that Q is equal to N multiplied by E. That means N is equal to Q upon E that is 1800 upon 1 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. And that is going to give us final answer as 1.125 into 10 raised to 22 electrons. While connecting a torch with battery, an electric current of 64 milliampere flows through the bulb. If the torch glows for 10 minutes, how many electrons will pass through the bulb? Once again, the similar main thing, I is given to be 64 milliampere. That is 64 into 10 raised to minus 3 ampere. Remember, we require the standard international unit for the calculations. Time t is given to be 10 minutes and that is equal to 600 seconds. Now, we are given, we know that E is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb and number of electrons are to be found out. Electric current I is equal to N into E upon T. That means N is equal to I T upon E. That is 64 into 10 raised to minus 3 whole upon 600 whole upon sorry multi, uh, 64 into 10 raised to minus 3 multiplied by 600 whole upon 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. And finally what we are going to get is an answer like 24 into 10 raised to 19 electrons. If 400 milliampere current flows through the bulb for one minute, how many electrons will pass through that? I is equal to 400 milliampere, that is 400 into 10 raised to minus 3 ampere. Time t is one minute, that is equal to 60 seconds. And we know that the charge is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. Number of electrons are to be found out. Electric current I, you know that it is N into E upon T, that is N is equal to I T upon E, that is 400 into 10 raised to minus C, value of I, multiplied by 60, value of T, whole upon E, that is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19. And when we carry out calculations, that is going to give us 1500 into 16 electrons, that many electrons will pass to the given conductor. 1800 coulomb electric charge is passing through an electric bulb in one hour. How much current is passing through the electric bulb? 
Q is equal to 1800 Coulomb. Time T is equal to 1 hour. That is equal to 3600 seconds. Current I is to be found out. We know that I is equal to Q upon T. That is 1800 upon 3600, 1 upon 2. That is 0 0.5 ampere. 